In this lecture, we will analyze the transition between resources. We will also answer a few questions. When resources become scarce, how does that affect our consumption of them? And how does scarcity induce economic change? We will quickly overview some very basic vocabulary, discuss the difficulties associated with scarcity, primarily through the analysis of resource transition, first from one depletable resource to another, and then from a depletable resource to a renewable one. As well, we will discuss resource extraction and environmental costs and how they affect the model. So first, let's discuss resource taxonomy. This is a classification strategy used to distinguish various types of resource availability. First, we have current reserves. They are the reserves which can be extracted profitably at current prices. Potential reserves are reserves which cannot be extracted prof profitably at this point, but could be with higher willingness to pay or improved technology. The resource endowment represents the natural occurrence of resources on the planet. We will now overview the types of resources, all of which you should be very familiar. Depletable resources are just that, they are depletable. These resources are not naturally replenished, or are replenished at such a rate that they can still be exhausted. The rate of depletion is affected by demand, and thus by the price elasticity of demand, durability, and reusability. The recyclable resources can at least be partially recovered, but we will not discuss re recyclables further in this discussion. And finally, we have renewable resources, which are naturally replenished at a rate which they cannot be exhausted. Both depletable and renewable sources have associated management problems. The problem with depletable resources is in determining the proper allocation of the diminishing stock. And for renewable sources, they must be capable of maintaining efficient and stable flows for them to be viable. On this slide, we show the quantity and cost of a certain depletable resource. On the left, we have a plot of the resource quantity over time. You can see that the quantity extracted steadily drops until the resource is no longer consumed at time 9 here. This does not mean that the resource is fully exhausted, though. On the right, we have a plot of both the total marginal cost and the marginal extraction cost. For simplicity's sake, we will assume constant marginal extraction cost for a majority of this discussion. The total marginal cost rises, as you can see here as this, up, as this upper plot, as upper line, and it will continue to increase as the quantity of the resource becomes lower and lower and more diminished, until finally the total marginal cost exceeds the willingness to pay and the quantity extracted falls to zero. This price, located at time 9 here, is called the choke price. Once the choke price is reached, transmission, or transition must occur. However, transition does not always have to occur before or after a choke point. It can occur before. Consider this figure. A plot of the cost of two different depletable resources. For this example, we can pretend that we are a utility company and we are given this data. Resource 1 is coal, and resource 2 is natural gas. And we assume that only one of them can be used at a time. We will either use only coal or only natural gas. We also assume that there is no external benefit in choosing one resource over the other, in terms of like energy density or um, cleaner carbon, and that there is no cost in associating between the two, such as different infrastructural needs. So under these assumptions, at time zero, we will purchase coal, this, this line shown here, because the price is much lower than it is for natural gas. But as we continue th traveling through time, we reach time T star, which the mar total marginal costs of the two are equal. At this point, natural gas becomes, after this point, natural gas becomes um, more cheap to use, and as an economically smart energy company, we will then purchase natural gas to produce electricity. Notice how we do not fully exhaust coal before we transition to another resource. It's simply just because the natural gas is cheaper that we stop using coal, but the coal is still there and present in the, in the planet. That is a depletable resource to another depletable resource. Now we will discuss 
depletable to renewable with the constant marginal extraction cost, MEC. We will assume that renewable resources are consumed at a constant rate and cost. The situation is very similar because once the total marginal cost of the depletable resource exceeds the renewable resource, the consumption, consumption switches from depletable to renewable. So here you can see that the marginal cost of one energy type is increasing. It would continue increasing in this manner in this direction. However, the cost of a renewable resource is, is constant and then therefore it becomes the viable option and we will switch to the renewable resource. Similarly here, when the cost changes at t, at t equals 6, the quantity extracted falls and then we will consume the renewable resource instead. In the previous example, we assumed constant marginal cost. Now we will consume increasing marginal cost. You can see here that the marginal extraction cost increases over time. We will assume that the marginal user cost, which is the difference between the total marginal cost and extraction cost, shows like the distance between these two lines here, will diminish down to zero. And it will reach zero at the transition point. Now, resource consumption is more strongly tied to the extraction costs, so you can see by the different shape of the quantity extracted curve, similar to the different shape of the total marginal cost curve as well. The marginal cost of exploration can be expected to rise as well, but it's not shown in the graph here. Successful exploration would cause a smaller and slower decline in consumption while dampening the rise in total marginal cost. So if you find a new fuel reserve, you will be able to extract it more cheaply and you will cons the shift, the switch point will move down since you have more, you find more of the resource which you are consuming. This will slower, this will, like I said before, cause a smaller and slower decline in consumption, consumption and dampen the total marginal cost. Similarly, technological progress would also reduce the cost of extraction. If you find a better way, a cheaper way, to extract a good, you can expect the total marginal cost to fall. Lowering the future cost of extraction would move the transition time also further into the future. Total, total marginal cost could actually fall if large enough advances were made in technology. Environmental costs were not a, accounted for in these models, but the inclusion of these costs would result in higher prices, which will dampen the demands from the supply side. This would cause the transition point to occur sooner. You can imagine that if we increase incorporate environmental costs, you can imagine this total cost curve to rise, and in doing so, this switch point will occur earlier because you will consume, you will reach the switch point at an earlier time because the marginal cost of the depletable resource will overcome the price of the renewable resource at a sooner time. The concept of external environmental costs ties the, t the fields of environmentalism and e excuse me, economics together. And this is how we arrive at natural resource economics. And I hope that was useful, considering uh, the given, in the given time that we are facing very, very many depletable resources and trying to find ways to make renewable energies viable. This kind of shows how, under an ideal case, the economy can switch from one resource to another.